Samsung Gallery versus Google Photos. Which one is better? In today's video, we are going to compare these brilliant applications and their features. And after watching this complete video, you guys let me know which one is better, which one do you prefer. The video is going to be very interesting. Keep watching and do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you love watching these interesting contents. You see, Google Photos is a cloud-based application that serves as a primary storage solution for photos and videos, designed for seamless synchronization across various devices and offering a web version for accessibility. It used to provide unlimited storage for lower resolution media, but this policy changed in 2021. So now new uploads count towards a shared 15 GB free storage limit across your Google account, including Gmail and Google Drive. But yeah, we do have options to expand the storage with Google One subscriptions. And Google Photos also excels at organizing content into a complete timeline of previously captured moments, making it effortless to revisit and cherish memories. On the other hand, Samsung Gallery is a system application primarily designed for Samsung Galaxy devices, where the phone's internal storage serves as the main repository for photos and videos. Unlike cloud-based solutions, it does not offer a web version, meaning users need to back up their media while switching to a new device. While it integrates with Microsoft OneDrive, offering just up to 5 GB of free cloud storage. Whereas if you're a Microsoft 365 subscriber, you can leverage a more substantial 1 TB of storage through this integration. Now here, Google Photos does have an advantage because tomorrow if you want to switch from Samsung Galaxy phone to some other Android device or even iPhone, you will have all the files available on Google Photos stored in the cloud. Of course, you need to have a bigger storage limit, but it is a big advantage. Whereas when it comes to gallery application, even though it offers cloud storage through OneDrive, it is just about 5 GB that we get and Samsung Gallery is available only on Samsung devices. We do not have a web version of it, whereas Google Photos can be accessed even on a computer or any other devices that you want. So considering these advantages, I'm gonna give it to Google Photos here. Next, when it comes to creating a locked folder or keeping the files private, Google Photos offer a locked folder. You can move all your images and videos to locked folder and completely lock it and make it private. And that is the only option that we get. Whereas on the Gallery application on Samsung Galaxy phones, we will be able to lock the album and keep the files private. To unlock it, you need biometric access or your password, and you can just tap on the three dot button to easily unlock the album here. This is something similar to what we have on the Google Photos. But Gallery offers furthermore advanced feature that is called Secure Folder. We will be able to select an album or we can select the videos and images and tap on the three dot button and move it to Secure Folder. And Secure Folder is an encrypted area where all your images and videos will be very, very secure. And this is protected by Knox security system, which is Samsung's proprietary security system. And it's a military grade system, which protects all your files and images. And now on One UI 8, we are also getting a private album feature, which will enhance this feature. So overall, Samsung Galaxy phones gallery application will be able to protect your files in a better way compared to the photos locked album. So this one goes to Samsung Gallery. Now, it's very easy to play the videos and photos available on your Photos app on your TV. Chromecast is available on more or less all the TVs and to cast the images or videos, all you need to do is just open the file and tap on the cast icon right on top right corner and select the TV, we are good to go. It's as simple and easy as that. Whereas on Samsung Gallery, we do have smart view option using which we'll be able to cast it on the TV and it works seamlessly on the Samsung TVs. And it is not that seamless on TVs like Sony or LG or any other TVs. So that is a disadvantage we have. And nowadays most people are going for smart TVs which is Android based TVs. So it becomes very easy to cast the images in videos by just one or two clicks on the Google Photos application. So this one goes to Google Photos. Next, how good are these in searching the images within the application? Let's try this. I will tap on search here and let's say I will search for greenery. And when I search it, you see both the applications do it really well. All the images with greenery have popped up right here. And after searching, you can see here on the Samsung Gallery application, we can sort this using the location tags here, whereas we do not see that option here on the Google Photos. And when you take a look at the search menu, you can see on Samsung Gallery, we got recent searches and we've got some tags over here. Whereas on Google Photos, we do not have the recent search options, but we do have some suggestions here, screenshots, videos, location, cars, and a specific 
specific year. So both seems to be working really well with their own features. So I would like to give it to both the applications one each points. Right now, Google Photos is leading. Let's see what happens next. Now let's talk about the user interface. Let's open both the applications. You're gonna see this first page here. We've got all the photos and videos right here. Whereas on Google Photos on the top, some folders have been created by uh, the application itself and uh, we will be able to just tap on that. You can see this is a two year ago memory. I'll be able to just tap on that and take a look at it. Uh, whereas here on the Google, uh, on the Samsung gallery, we do not get that option. And at the bottom, we have got photos, collections and search option. It's pretty simple. Here we've got pictures, albums, stories. Uh, usually we get many options, four options. I have added the search button through gallery labs on the Samsung gallery. And uh, when we tap on collections, we get the on device option here, all the uh, you know photos and uh, videos which are available on device. And then we have got the synced albums and images onto the cloud. Whereas here, we do have an option here to sync the images and videos to the cloud. I haven't done it because OneDrive just offers 5 GB of storage and I do not want to expand it. Whereas here on Google Photos, I've got 15 GB. Some memory have been consumed by uh, the Gmail application and Google Drive and majority of it is on the Google Photos. So I got tons of images and videos right here. Now let's go to albums here. Now here you can see all the albums are well organized. Here we have got favorites, uh, recycle bin, pictures, test, some suggestions are available right here on top. And then we have got something called stories on the uh, Samsung Gallery application, which is created by AI within the application, as you can see. This is something similar to what we saw here on the top on the Google Photos. So we do have stories here on Gallery and we do have something similar to that on Google Photos as well. Now let's open a specific image here and uh, we have got share option, edit option, lens and bin. We have got a favorites option, editing option, AI, which will come to that in a bit, share option, and then we have got delete button. So uh, it is almost similar to each other. I don't see any big difference in terms of UI, the way we operate to get to the editing menus or albums or stories, it's all fine. Both are simple and intuitive. So this will go to both the applications, one each. Now let's talk about some interesting AI features that we have. Let me open the image here. Let's compare this AI feature here. Now here on gallery, we have got dedicated AI icon, whereas here we will have to tap on edit and then tap on this dedicated AI icon. Now here we've got generative edit and sketch to image feature. Whereas here on Google photos, we don't have sketch to image option. I am only referring to the Google photo application on Galaxy phone or any other Android phone, not the Pixel phones. On Pixel phones, you might get different options, which is exclusive to Pixel, but we are only talking about the application which is available for uh, all the other Android phones. Now let's try this. Let's remove this particular dish here. I will select the image here. Let's do that here. Perfect. Now what we are going to do is we are going to erase this object. Let's see which one does better. Now here on the gallery, I had uh, to tap twice after selecting the image, whereas on Google Photos, it just goes and deletes that object. And it is also giving me multiple options here, whereas on the gallery application, we just get one image. Now both have done a great job, uh, but only issue I see here is on the Google Photos, it has left some mark here. This area has become slightly brighter. Uh, the camera may not be doing the justice, but to the naked eye, I am able to see that here. Whereas this is pretty clean. There is no mark whatsoever. And uh, if you see this image, you will believe that there was nothing over here. Whereas here you can see that mark. I just swipe towards the right. This image also has that mark. Here also we have got that mark and uh, there is a mark here as well. So all images are similar. We don't have any difference here. You can see the original here. Now let me take another image as an example. Let's tap on edit and AI icon here. Tap on the AI icon and tap on generative edit. Now I'll be able to zoom in here on Google Photos whereas here I cannot go out of the frame here. I have to be within that frame. Now let's try to remove the background here. Let's see if uh, it can do this. Nope, it is not doing the justice here. Let's try just drawing it on this frame. Nope. I'll try this again. I'm going with the exact frame here. Again, it has picked up the whole thing. Let's try this on the Samsung Galaxy phone on the gallery application. Look at that. That is perfect, isn't it? Let's draw this here as well. This is just amazing on the gallery application. Now let's try to remove this and generate. 
that is just amazing you can see it has completely removed that background this is the original it has done a great job here whereas on the pixel phones i'm still not able to get this done you can see i will just go with the frame here exact frame here it's still picking my photo up here which is a bummer so Samsung is doing a better job here. Now, apart from that, we do have sketch to image. Let me tap on edit and tap on AI icon here. If I swipe towards the right, we've got sketch to image feature. I can draw something over here and generate an image. You see, I've just drawn a butterfly. I can tap on generate to add an object or a subject here on this image. Whereas I do not have that option here on the Google Photos. Again, I'm not talking about Pixel phones. I'm talking about the Google Photos on the Galaxy phone. You can see it has generated one image here and uh, I will be able to generate more by tapping on that option. So this is pretty cool on Samsung Galaxy phones. Now let's take a look at a few more AI features. Let me open this specific image and I will open the same image here. Now let me tap on edit button and it is suggesting me to apply portrait effect for this image. And here on the Samsung Galaxy phone, I need to swipe up here to get those options, AI options. We've got background blur option, fixed lens distortion. Now here, let's apply the portrait effect. Let's select this background blur option to blur the background here. Let's see how it works. And let's try the same on photos as well. Now, as you can see, Google Photos is doing a better job here. It has blurred everything here in the background, except for these hairs of the lady who's, who was standing behind me, whereas here, it's the same issue with the lady, but uh, this subject is also clearly visible. This guy is not blurred. Whereas on the photos, you can see there's another person here who's standing who is also not blurred here. So neither of them has done a good job here. They have got their own issues with this editing option. And if you look at the Google Photos here, when I tap on edit, under suggestions, we have got multiple options here. Whereas on Galaxy phone, you can see we just get background blur suggestion, fixed lens distortion option. Whereas here, we got magic eraser, dynamic option. We can uh, get the image a little clearer here. We got portrait. We got an option to enhance the image. And photo enhance option is really good on uh, Google Photos here. And we've got color pop option, vivid option, luminous option, radiant option. And there are multiple more options that we get on the Google Photos. So the suggestions are pretty good on Google Photos, whereas here we just get a couple of options and we'll have to manually go into the image editing options and apply the effects. Now let's try another image here. Let me pick up this image. Now let me tap on edit and I'll swipe up here to check the suggestions. As you can see, this is getting live effect, erase shadows, background effect, and remaster. Those are the four options that we are getting here. Whereas on Google Photos, we have got unblur, which is similar to remaster, and we have got dynamic and enhance. Those are the only three options that we are getting. Now let's check out another image here. Maybe uh, this one, edit, I will swipe up. Again here, we have got live effect, background blur, Erase Reflections, Remaster. We've got Dynamic, Enhance, Warm, and Cool. So this completely depends on the image. And uh, on many of the images, Google Photos gives us better options or more options when it comes to AI enhancements for the images. Whereas on Samsung Galaxy phones, we do get some good options, but sometimes we don't get to do certain things like photo unblur. If you want to uh, blur the background, we don't get that option on some of the images. Whereas on Google Photos, even if we don't get them on suggestions, we can go ahead and do some of the stuff like background blur, etc., on the editing options or tools that we have. Now let's check out some AI features on the video. On Gallery, we do have an option to edit the background audio. You can just tap on this AI icon. It will analyze the sound of the video and it will give us options to ready Use the voices or let's say music or we've got noise in the background all that can be reduced using audio eraser feature which is pretty cool on gallery whereas on the google photos we do not have that option we can only mute the uh, our background audio but maybe on pixel phones you will have uh, the additional options however on the galaxy phones or any other android phones on the photos app we do not have this advanced feature which is available on the gallery and on samsung gallery we have got one more advanced feature you can just press and hold on a video and get a slow motion clip out of it as you can see 
this has become a slow motion clip. When I remove my finger, I get this option to download it. I'll be able to save a slow motion clip from a video, which is available on the gallery. Whereas on the Google Photos, we do not have that option. So there are some advanced AI features available on the Samsung Gallery application when it comes to videos. But when it comes to photos, the Google Photos does slightly better. But I'm going to give this to Samsung Gallery because it has got slightly better features. Next, let's talk about a few editing features available on both these applications. On the gallery as well as on the photos application, we can just select the images or videos and tap on create. We get various different options on gallery. We get GIF, collage, movie and uh, save as PDF options. Whereas here we can create highlight video, animation, collage and cinematic photo. So different things we can create on these two applications. And when you open an image and tap on edit, you can see we have got again different layout here and the best part here on the google photos is we get to immediately correct the dynamic range enhance the image we can change some effects of the image so these are all instantaneous on the google photos and that is because we get all these suggestions depending on the image whereas on the gallery we do not get these suggestions as soon as you open the image you can only swipe up on the image to get those few suggestions as you can see i just get live effect and remaster whereas here on google photos i get various different options to edit this image so the suggestions are much better it's more of an ai feature which we already discussed but yeah it is slightly better on google photos apart from that when you swipe towards the right we got crop option we got some tools here to blur unblur magic eraser sky and under adjust we have got many different options or tools here and then we do have filters markup we can use the pen highlighter text and we've got more option from onedrive whereas here we have got some advanced features as well. We can crop the image, we can change the filters. And when you tap on this icon, we can change the light balance, brightness, exposure, contrast, and all this. And we have got this icon here using which we can draw something similar to markup option that we saw here on the Google Photos. And we have got this option here. This is slightly advanced. We've got object eraser, lasso, spot color, color mix, style options. So more or less, all these tools are available on both these platforms. However, on gallery application, we have got something dedicated for editing. That is the studio app, which is integrated inside the Samsung gallery. As you can see, we've got go to studio option. When you tap on this, we will be able to create projects. We can add time lines and add multiple different elements to create the uh, videos whereas here on google photos we do not get such advanced video editing features so overall both are pretty good both of them have got their own editing tools but having studio application integrated on samsung gallery is one big advantage so i'm going to give this to gallery application now if you look at the points table google photos have got four points and samsung gallery has got five points so the winner is samsung gallery both are amazing applications end of the Day, it depends on your requirement if you are someone who want that cloud-based storage then you can always go for google photos application and if you keep switching your phone to different oems then of course google photos will be better when it comes to editing features maybe you would prefer galleries editing features the ai features etc so you might want to go for gallery application so it purely depends on your requirement how you want to use the application according to me both are great applications but i would still prefer to have google photos on the device but i still end up using gallery application most of the time that's about it you guys let me know what do you think there's a lot of effort gone into this video so go ahead if you find this video informative hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe to the channel and we also have our own wallpaper application wallverse if you're looking for an application which offers variety of wallpapers and get refreshed every day then you can go ahead and download this application we've got some beautiful free and premium wallpapers here and they get updated almost every day so go ahead check out the link is in the description thanks for watching my name is salian signing off cheers bye bye